<laughs> handful of thoughts here. Um, kind of rapid fire. One is, uh, your website should be created in general, uh, which I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself, but it should be created by uh, either a marketing agency or a firm that is very familiar with uh, financial jargon, compliance, and the target clientele. Uh, way too often do financial advisors pay you know a bunch of money, thousands and thousands of dollars to have a freelancer create a website for them when the only thing that freelancers have ever done in the past has been create websites for realtors or uh, you know uh, property and casualty agents maybe or maybe they've done stuff in the past for like this coffee shops down the street like the clientele that financial advisors specifically the retirement market look for is it's a very specific it's a very specific type of client uh, so the language is really important like on the website the copy uh, but the other thing is the compliance piece of it um, for those with broker dealers or with an RIA or securities license, um, boy, you gotta be careful what's on your website. Cause if, uh, there's something that that freelancer puts on the website, that's not compliant, you can get in big trouble for that. So that's one. Uh, second is to have multiple call to actions on your site, like visible right away. Um, the, the stat, I don't have it in front of me, but it was like the most, uh, the average time someone spends on a website, uh, for someone in the financial services arena, uh, not including banks. They had banks out of the study because you struggled to find like the login information and everything. But the average amount of time is less than six seconds. So that means they click it, they find you on Google, they click it, and then they look at the, the initial page that loads. They don't scroll. They just look at what's in front of them, whether it's on their phone or on their uh, computer. And then they choose right then and there. <clears throat> and for a lot of them, they leave. So you need to have, uh, there's actually two or three things that I'd highly recommend. Uh, again, financially, I understand if some of this is not, possible or even relevant, but, um, assuming you're not like fully virtual based, if you've got somewhat of a community around you that you work with people in, uh, have something really related to your city or your community visibly on display right away. Uh, ideally that's a video. So for example, if you're in San Francisco area, have like a rolling video of the golden gate bridge, like something really short, but something playing in the background that immediately triggers their, their, uh, community like feel. The second is going to be the call to action piece. Um, hopefully at this point, uh, you've got uh, something that if, if, like if I went to your website right now and I didn't scroll and I only went to the homepage, there better be at least one or two things that I can immediately leave your page with without having to do anything else. So for example, a lot of advisors will have a call to action, like schedule an appointment with me uh, or you know your, your uh, second opinion or consultation. That's fine. It's not really going to hurt, but it's not going to do anything for you. Um, most websites, they're probably placeholders at this point that, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if you had a website, you were considered the next like big thing. Uh, nowadays you have to have one for people to know you even exist. So, uh, they're going to go to your website to check on you, but I would recommend having like a, uh, like a PDF, a white paper perhaps, or like a, a an ebook or a guide or something that, they could literally go to your site. If it was me, I could go to your site. I see, hey, download this, you know, X, Y, Z thing. I can put in my information, download it, and then leave. Um, we live in a society now where most people, uh, especially as we continue to get older and older and older, a lot of people get more skeptical of uh, doing things in an online world. It's like we need it in the online world and we're comfortable with it, but we're still skeptical to trust it. So um, it's better, like, Build the trust by just providing value. It's the easiest way to overcome that. Um, a big thing on the website too is most people now will look at your website on their phone. And I don't think that's ever going to slow down. I think for the most part, uh, especially as like, a, you know, the generation that's between, you know, 30 to 50 as they continue to get older and smartphones are just like, they're here. Like almost every single person has a smartphone. Uh, they're going to be going to your website on their phone. So you really need to invest in making sure that you're, a website looks really good on mobile. If you only have a desktop type website or a laptop or tablet, uh, you're probably gonna struggle on that. So, and then the last thing, um, the more videos you can have on your site about you specifically, like your story, your vision, uh, your team, your firm, uh, the better. Make them personal. If you can spend the money to have an actual video company come and record you, that's great. If you can't, um, I would just shoot like a really short video or a couple photos. Um, what you don't want to do is have a lot of canned content on your about us page, uh, the about us page or our firm page or our story, like however you phrase it, that's typically the most commonly visited web page. 
uh, on your website other than just the home page. So you want to have something that get people to stay for more than that five, six seconds. So that's, that's just some quick hits on websites. Uh, I, that's this huge topic could go on and on and on, but, um, hopefully that's four or five good snippets for you to take away.